Hi there, I'm Ben Phillips. I'm the rector at St. George's Church, and I want to talk to you today a little bit about uh, the Book of Common Prayer. The Book of Common Prayer is uh, an essential and central feature and part of the life of the Anglican Church and the Episcopal Church, and I'm putting together a couple of videos uh, to introduce this book to you, uh, to teach you a little bit about its history, uh, but more importantly, how to use it in prayer and in worship, both for yourself, in your home or your household, and also uh, if you participate in a worship service, either online or uh, in a worship service on site, uh, that you'll, through these videos, become more familiar with this wonderful treasure of the Christian faith called the Book of Common Prayer. The Book of Common Prayer is at the heart of the Anglican tradition. It's second only to scripture in authority. Prayer books have been around for thousands of years, uh, but what makes the Book of Common Prayer unique is that it was intended to unite an entire nation of Christians with a uniform style of worship in language that everyone understood. It was common, therefore, in its use, its consistency, and in its language. The first English Book of Common Prayer was written by Archbishop Thomas Cranmer, in 1549 during the English Reformation. It's both a very Protestant book and also Catholic. It's Protestant in its doctrine and its theology, uh, without question, but it's Catholic in its form and structure. Thomas Cranmer, like all Protestants, upheld the supreme authority of the Bible in the life of the church and in individual believers. And the Book of Common Prayer clearly reflects this priority. In fact, some have said that the Book of Common Prayer, in many respects, is the Bible arranged for worship. A lot of the material in the Book of Common Prayer was original to Cranmer, like the Prayer of Confession, the General Confession, or uh, the Collect for Purity that we say at our Holy Eucharist services on Sundays. However, a lot of the material is also taken from existing Catholic liturgies. For example, many of the collects, which is a special type of prayer that we say on Sundays, in the Book of Common Prayer date all the way back to the Galatian Sacramentary of the 5th century. In this sense, the Book of Common Prayer is therefore quite Catholic in that it arises from the Western liturgical tradition. The Book of Common Prayer has been revised many, many times over the centuries. The first revision was actually done by Cranmer himself just a few years later in 1552, and it is considered by some, including yours truly, to be the definitive Book of Common Prayer. A century later, the Book of Common Prayer underwent a revision in 1662, which proved to be the most widespread version. As the British Empire spread all over the world, the Book of Common Prayer that was in use at this time was the 1662 version. Thus, this became the template of many, if not most, of the various provinces of the Anglican Worldwide Communion. Each country or province modified the 1662 original that was in its own local usage. The Episcopal Church, our current Book of Common Prayer, is the 1979 edition. At first glance, the Book of Common Prayer can seem a little daunting, and understandably so, the 1979 Book of Common Prayer is a thousand pages, but if you can trust that it is a meaningful tool for Christian worship that was actually written and intended for all of us to know and use and to be accessible, then hopefully it becomes a little less daunting. And to bring that daunting factor down even more, it helps to have a point of entry, a means of getting our feet wet. For those who grew up in the Episcopal or in the Anglican Church, you're hopefully somewhat familiar with the prayer book already. Or maybe you're totally new to the prayer book. Or maybe you're somewhere in between. In any case, these videos will help you to learn how to use and appreciate the Book of Common Prayer. One of the easiest ways to get into the prayer book is with the services of Compline or Noonday Prayer. They're quite short and are self-contained. That is, you don't have to look up any readings or seasonal prayers in order to pray them. My next video is a quick walkthrough of these little gems. If you're not interested in reading through the services of Noonday or Compline uh, and would like to move on to more advanced, shall we say, uses of the prayer book, uh, you can skip 
the next video and move on to the preparing for worship video, which will explain the liturgical calendar and how to look up lessons in the lectionary and daily office in the prayer book, as well as finding collects and other prayers that you'll need to help arrange and organize a service of morning prayer, evening prayer, or even a Holy Communion service. So until then, I'm Ben Phillips. It's great to be here with you, and I hope you enjoy these videos.